All right, so we're entering section 8-3. So as I said, we're um, entering 8-3. Uh, it is your application, um, a huge chapter used constantly throughout all of your future math courses. So it's really vital that um, you understand what we're doing in this section. Um, it's not going to go away. It's one of the most useful things you'll have this year as far as application to real world. So you'll see a lot of word problems as we go through this as well. So let's just start here with a review. The Venn diagram at the right shows a relationship between similar and congruent figures. In other words, what it's saying to you is that um, all congruent figures are similar. But are all similar figures congruent? No, because these are the similar figures here in this dark green that are not congruent. But every congruent figure, meaning same size, same shape, are considered similar because they match the definition of similar, meaning that corresponding angles are congruent and corresponding sides are proportional because congruent figures' corresponding <coughs> sides would be one to one. And so let's answer these questions here. All similar figures are congruent. True or false? We just answered that. What is it? False. All congruent figures are similar <coughs> figures. True. Some similar figures are congruent figures. True. Then you are to circle the postulator theorem you can use to verif verify that the triangles at the right are similar. So look at the markings. Do you know anything about sides? Yes or no? No, you know nothing about sides. So you can't use those two theorems, so it leads you to believe what? It must be AA, and don't you have two right angles that are corresponding and congruent, and then these two angles here are marked as congruent, and they're also corresponding. So therefore, you do have two angles that are both corresponding and congruent, and so it does match that similarity postulate. So we're going to use ratios a lot from here on out. Um, so look at question 5 through 7. Circle the ratio of the length of the longer leg to the length of the shorter leg in the triangle here. So circle whichever one of these is the length of the longer leg to the shorter leg. And make sure that you get it in the correct order. So which of the two is the longer leg? the 12. So, uh, and, and which is a shorter leg? 5. So it has to be 12 to 5. Agreed? So then number 6, circle the ratio of the length of the shorter leg to the length of the hypotenuse. So what's the shorter leg? 5 and the hypotenuse? 13. So that would be the first one. Circle the ratio of the length of the longer leg to the length of the hypotenuse. So the longer leg is what? 12 and the hypotenuse? 13, and so there's your ratio. And the reason why we did that is because you just did sine, cosine, and tangent without realizing it. So let's look at the uh, next page. So here's our key concept. If you've never seen these before, we're going to use the ratios of the side lengths of uh, right triangles to help us find other side lengths and other angles. And so we looked at special right triangles that were 30, 60, 90, and 45, 40, 90. 45, 45, 90. But what if we don't have those triangles? What if our triangle has degree measures of 53 and, I don't know, whatever, 37? <laughs> I have to think on that one. Um, then what do I do? And so uh, we have developed what's called trigonometry. And three of the trig functions are called sine, cosine, and tangent. It's just their names. Uh, their shortened form for sine is S-I-N. Shortened form for cosine is C-O-S. And shortened form for tangent is T-A-N. And so you'll see me using those a lot. And I like the... I like Sokotoa. And it, you, it's handy to know how to spell Sokotoa. Sokotoa does you absolutely no good if you don't know how it's spelled. And Sokotoa helps you understand the ratios for sine, cosine, and tangent. And so we're going to go ahead and write so, S-O-H, and then ka, 
C A H, and then TOA is going to be T O A, SOCA TOA. And what this stands for is sine, and so you can see here, sine represents the length of the leg opposite, and our angle A, right here, angle A is what's called our angle of reference. With angle A as our angle of reference, meaning I'm, I'm looking out from angle A. So if angle A is my angle of reference, um, sine is always the leg opposite over the hypotenuse. So the leg opposite A, wouldn't it be side A? True or false? Okay, and then the hypotenuse is always the side across from the 90 degree angle. Side adjacent refers to the leg. So according to angle A, leg B is the side that's adjacent. The hypotenuse, I understand, is touching angle A, but it's the hypotenuse. It is not a side adjacent. It is only the hypotenuse. You can't call it anything else. So a leg is either the side opposite or the side adjacent to the angle that we're talking about. If I change my viewpoint to angle B, now this ratio has changed. What's the leg opposite of angle B? Go directly opposite. What's the leg opposite angle B? Side B. What's the hypotenuse? That hasn't changed. All right, so depending upon your angle of reference depends on what the ratio for sine, cosine, or tangent is. And then cosine represents uh, leg adjacent over the hypotenuse. So cosine here, what's the leg adjacent to A? Meaning it has to touch it. So it has to be B, and then the hypotenuse again is C. And then the tangent is always the leg opposite over the leg adjacent. So leg opposite to side A, side A, and the leg adjacent, side B. So that's what Sokoto is telling you. So if sine is the leg opposite over the hypotenuse, that's where the O and the H come from. If cosine is the leg adjacent over the hypotenuse, that's where the A and the H come from. And if tangent is the side opposite over the side adjacent, that's where the OA comes from. But um, it's really easy to misspell Sokotoa. So I have developed yet another little ditty for you. Are you ready? Is it a song? No. Do you have a question, dear? We haven't applied it yet, so don't panic. Okay, so what's your question? Is adjacent, does adjacent just mean that it touches? Correct. And so every angle has two sides that touch it, right? So you're picking the side that's touching that angle that is not the hypotenuse. And you will never see me take the sine, cosine, and tangent of the 90-degree angle. It will always be of the acute angle in that right triangle. Does that make sense? So it will never be from the 90. All right, so how do we remember Sokotoa? Write this down. Let's see. Sum old hippie. So there's your S O H, right? There's your S, your O, and your H. Some old hippie caught. Another, let me see if I can fit this in here, caught another hippie. You're going to love the last part, C-A-H, so there's your C-A-H. Some old hippie caught another hippie. Do not take this home to mom and dad and complain about it. I don't want to hear about it. Tripping. Yeah. On. Acid. <laughs> I knew you'd love it. T-O-A. How can you forget it? Some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid. That's Sokotoa. Sokotoa does you absolutely no good. See, I told you today would be fun. Sokotoa does you absolutely no good if you don't know how to spell it. So constantly run that through your head. Some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid. And you'll hear me say that to you all the time. And if you don't know what I'm saying when I say tripping on acid, ask. What, what are you saying? Oh, that's tangent opposite adjacent, right? So this is sine opposite hypotenuse. This is cosine adjacent hypotenuse, tangent opposite adjacent. We're just doing ratios of the, the sides of that right triangle. That's it. All right, so let's finish filling out their key concepts. So for cosine... What's the, what did we say for cosine again um, of A? What leg is adjacent? 
B. So we want to put a B here. And of course, the C is still the hypotenuse. And then for tangent, what leg is opposite A? A and adjacent B. So we want to put A over B. And so then this column uh, right here, we want to draw a line. So now we've changed our angle of reference. Have you noticed? Our angle of reference has changed. So now if we're looking at angle B, let's find sine. So sine is some old hippie. So old is, oh, what happened? Okay, hold that thought. Okay, so technology is back. So if we're talking about, shh, stop, listen. If we're talking about angle B, some old hippie, sign, old is what? Opposite. Opposite, so isn't that B, and then hippie is what? Hypotenuse is C. So we're talking about B over C. So you're going to draw a line from to B over C. So wouldn't that be this right here? And then for cosine of angle B, so we're going to be up here at angle B, cosine is caught another hippie, caught for cosine, another for adjacent. So what's the leg adjacent? Which one's touching? There's two of them touching. Which one's the leg? A. And the hypotenuse? C. So we want A over C. So that would be right there. And then obviously tangent must be this one here, but let's double check. So tangent from angle B, tripping on acid, T for tangent, right? On is what? Opposite. Opposite. So what's that? B, acid, adjacent, A. So B over A, and isn't that what we drew here? All right. So suppose triangle ABC is a right isosceles triangle. What would the tangent of B angle B equal? right isosceles. So think about this. If we have a right isosceles, here's A, B, and C, and this is my right angle. What do you know about a right isosceles triangle? It is a 45-45, but what do you know about the sides of a right isosceles? These are equal, right? And if this is side A, and this is side B, and this is side C, notice that um, the Lo the lowercase letter is always across from its uppercase letter and lowercase b is across from uppercase b. That's the way we usually name sides in a triangle. So here if I have the tangent of angle b is equal to side opposite which would be side b and side adjacent which would be a, right? Because here's side opposite and here's side adjacent. What do you know about A and B? They're equal. They're equal. So what do you know about two equal numbers being divided by themselves? One. Exactly. So doesn't this equal 1? No matter, I don't know what A and B are, but no matter what A and B are, they're going to equal 1. And remember what our ratios are for some of you. One of you here said it was a 45-45-90 triangle, right? And so if this is a 45-45-90 triangle, isn't, doesn't our ratio or our pattern go 1, 1, red, 2? True? And that makes sense why those are both 1 and 1. Because no matter what, it could be 6 and 6, they reduce to 1 and 1. All right, so let's look at problem 1. We're going to write some ratios, and so you've got this triangle here. Uh, was uh, short leg 8, long leg 15, and hypotenuse 17. Pay attention to whether we're talking about angle G or angle T, because your angle of reference changes the ratio. So if I'm talking about sine of angle T, sine is some old hippie, so sine is whatever what? Old is opposite, hippie is hypotenuse. So wouldn't sine of T be 8 over 17? But what is sine of G? Opposite, 15 over 17. So the sine is different depending upon our angle of reference, where we're looking from. So look at uh, question 12. Circle the measure of the leg opposite angle G. Which one would that be? 15 is correct. 
Question 13, circle the measure of the hypotenuse, 17, and then circle the measure of the leg adjacent to angle G, 8, because the other one that's adjacent is a hypotenuse, and we don't count that, right? So then write each of the ratios. Some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid. You write those with numbers. <clears throat> Did you write them? Yeah. Mariah, you wrote them? I want you thinking. It's always better to think about math, right? <laughs> we can forget about everything else. All right, so sign some old hippie, right? Some old hippie. So opposite of G is 15, and the hypotenuse is 17, because this is our angle of reference right there. Cosine adjacent to G is 8, hypotenuse is 17, and tangent of G opposite is 15, adjacent is 8. How did you do? Good, bad, ugly? Okay, all right. So let's look at the next page. So problem two, we're going to use a trig ratio to find distance. Now notice this time we have an angle measure. And so below is one student solution. Well, we haven't talked about this yet. He's set up an equation here. The cosine of, and then we now know the degree measure. It's not just called angle A, B, C, D, E, F, or G, right? It's actually got an angle measure here. So for this particular problem, this is the only angle I know, although technically could I find this angle here? How? You could add these two and subtract them from 180, or you know that the acute angles add up to 90, bless you. So you, so you could subtract 54 from 90, and then you could make this your angle of reference. I tend to go with what they gave me. And so then, if that is my angle of reference, I like to look at the other the sides that they've given me, and I like to name them as side opposite, side adjacent, or the hypotenuse. So what is 17? It is a hypotenuse, so I like to make that H. And what is the W? Opposite. So when I look at the sides that they've given me, and I have side opposite and the hypotenuse, does that ratio go with sine, cosine, or tangent? And I'm thinking of some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid, so it's OH. Is it so, ka, or toa? So, so that gives us SOH, right? So what trig function should we use to solve with? Sine. Always look at the sides you've been given, determine whether they're opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse, and then based upon those sides, are you going to use sine, cosine, or tangent? And that's why you're looking at so, ka, or toa. And so here we know we're using sine, and so this is the error the student made, was they used cosine. And so the trig ratio that uses sides W and 17 should be sine of 54. And so that's the error the student made. The student used cosine instead of sine. And then we're going to find the value W correctly. You will need to be bringing your as I said before, your scientific calculator with you to class. Um, but let's look at how we should set it up. So instead of cosine of 54 degrees, we're going to write sine of 54 degrees equals. And then what is our ratio for sine? Some old hippie. What's old? The W. What's hippie? The 17. Every time you set up an equation using sine, cosine, or tangent, you might want to put over here, here's the general equation. You're either going to choose sine, cosine, or tangent. And then you're going to have some degree. You may or may not know that degree. In this case, we do. Today, we do. Equals some ratio of something over something. Opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, or opposite over adjacent. So you're going to know two out of those three question marks. 
and you have to decide based upon this ratio whether you have the numbers or not. It's just according to what those sides are called, whether you're going to use sine, cosine, or tangent. And so that's why we chose the sine. So then from here, I'm going to take the sine of 54 and put it over 1. What have I created? A proportion, right? And how do we solve proportions? We are going to cross multiply. So we're going to multiply 1 to W, and we're going to multiply 17 to the sine of 54 degrees. So if I cross multiply, I get W equals, because 1 times W is W, and I get 17 times the sine of 54 degrees. So at this point, I'm going to stop this so that I can show you um, my calculator and your calculator. Um, but then I'll come back to this. So if you're watching the video, you'll have to figure out your calculator on your own for right now. So then your W found by your calculator to the nearest tenth is 13 point what? Not 7 because it's got a 5 next to it, right? So doesn't the 5 bump the 7 up to an 8? And so this is 13.8. And then we're going to do problem three tomorrow. All right, so today we're going to look at not finding the side length or a missing side length, but how do we find a missing angle? So as you look at example three here, you notice that you've been given these two sides. Couldn't we use Pythagoras' theorem to find the hypotenuse? missing third side. But how do we find these angles? Well, we can use sine, cosine, and tangent to find these one or two of these missing, well, once you find one, haven't you found the other one? Yeah. Because what do you know about those angles? They add up to 90 degrees. And so it doesn't matter whether you find angle P or angle Y, to be perfectly honest. You have to make that choice. Uh, now, if the question is asking you to find angle P versus angle Y, well, your choice is now made for you, right? But technically, you could find angle P. They're asking for angle Y, but you could find angle P and then do what to find Y? Subtract it from 90, and that would give you Y. So because some of you, you know, just will decide, well, I just would rather find P because I see it easier, that kind of thing. And, and that's fine, as long as you show your work. So let's look at uh, questions 20 through, and then it'll spill on to the next um, page. But question 20 says, circle the lengths that you know. In other words, the lengths that you've been given. Have you been given the hypotenuse? No. No. Have you been given the side adjacent to Y? Yes. Yes. Which one is that? 41. What's, and this is our angle of reference, so yes, 41 would be that one. And then have you been, have you been given the side opposite of Y? Yes. Yes. And that one is? 100. So then question 21 says, cross out the ratio that you will not use to find the measure of angle Y. So if you look at Sokotoa, some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid, which one, and then this one happens to be adjacent is A, right, and opposite is O. So which one of these have an O and an A in it? the tangent, right? So there's your O and your A. So we're not going to use sine, and we're not going to use cosine. We'll use tangent. And so this is no different than what you did in last night's homework, right? But here's the difference. So underline the correct word to complete the statement. If you know the sine, cosine, or tangent ratio of an angle, you can use the... Well, you don't know this part. So let's go ahead and set up our equation before we can answer this question. So we know that we have tangent, right? And do we know the degree of reference? Yes or no? No. So we are going to name that angle Y because that's the letter angle that they gave us. So the tangent of angle Y, and you don't put the little angle marker in there, so you just put the tangent of Y, is equal to our ratio for tangent is opposite over adjacent. And so our side opposite is what again? 100, and then our adjacent is 41. <coughs> so whenever you have this case right here, you don't know your angle of reference, this is when we're going to use something called the inverse to find the measure of the angle. So on your calculator, notice that you have, no matter what calculator you have, 
Um, if you look at the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons, aren't there buttons above the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons that look like this? Sine to the negative 1, cosine to the negative 1, and tan to the negative 1. Do you find those? Yeah. And, it, all, and all three of these buttons require your second function key, no matter what calculator you're on. It should require the second function key, whether it's a graphing calculator or your scientific calculator. And all of these, and you might want to write yourself a note, all of these, these are used to find a missing angle. So if I don't know my angle measure, we're going to use this thing called the inverse. So how I'm going to place this particular equation right here into my calculator, this is my equation right here. You want to get y away from the tangent. So I have told you that the tangent and whatever, this trig function, whatever it is, and the angle measure, they're one unit, they stay together, unless you don't know the actual angle itself. So to undo this, we are going to use the inverse tangent. So y is equal to the inverse tangent of whatever your ratio is. And our ratio, in this case, is 100 over 41. So all we did to break this apart was to change it into y equals the inverse tangent. The ratio just goes straight down into here. This whole ratio just goes right down into there. So that's what you're going to plug in your calculator. Now, if it's get to know your calculator. You might have to plug in the ratio first, 100 divided by 41, hit enter, and then hit the inverse second function tangent. Most calculators though you're going to punch in the second function tangent first and it'll start with the parentheses, put in this full ratio, get in the habit of ending those parentheses. So for my calculator and those of you who are watching the video, you're not going to be able to see this part. Sorry. All right, so we are back. And so y is approximately equal to 67.7064. And actually, it's really more like, well, it goes on further. Um, but if I want to round to the nearest, and they don't say here, do they? Oh, nearest degree. So if I want to round to the nearest degree, which is here, look next door. So what's my nearest degree? So the measure of angle Y is approximately equal to, so that's a squiggly equal sign, 68 degrees. So then if I asked you for the measure of angle X, could you find it? I'm sorry, measure of angle P, could you find it? Yeah, and what would P be? 22 degrees. You just subtract it from 90, right? And they could very well ask you that. So any questions on that? That's going to be getting some used, to, getting you used to that. Because you're going to have some mixed problems today. You're going to have some problems where you have the degree and one of the sides and you have to find a missing side. Or you're going to have two of the sides and you have a missing angle. And so have your notes next to you. Look at how they're set up and try to follow it until you get used to it. It should become second nature. Tatum? Well, hang on, we're going we're gonna to get there. And so let's go to the next page. And so we already went through all this, but you might want to just write it out anyway. So um, this was supposed to be the tangent of y was equal to 100 over 41. And then to get the y by itself, we did the inverse tangent of 100 over 41. And then that equaled 67 point seven zero six blah 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 and then we were rounding to the nearest um, degree and so that's how we got our 68 degrees so then what I would like you to do before we do some additional problems is do the lesson check on on your own 25 26 27 and so I'll give you probably about two minutes to do that on your own and I will quietly do it up here and we'll talk about it
I want you to discuss your findings with those around you and discuss where the true error occurred in the student's thinking. Okay, so who wants to share their thoughts about the fact that one student states that the sine of angle A is greater than the sine of angle X because the lengths of the sides of triangle ABC are greater than the lengths of the sides of triangle XYZ? Who wants to give me their thoughts on that? Chris? Um, they're similar, if their angles are similar so that uh, A is congruent to X, but the side lengths are not similar. So the students have thought that since the side lengths weren't congruent, the angles weren't congruent, but... And what do you know about the triangles themselves? Uh, all the angles add up to 90 degrees, so... Would triangle ABC and XYZ be similar triangles or not similar triangles? Uh, they, are similar. they are similar triangles. By what theorem or postulate do you know? AA. AA. So the fact that the triangles are similar by AA tells you that, and this is what Chris was saying, tells you that corresponding angles are congruent, but corresponding sides are proportional, right? And so the student's original error in thinking is that since the sides were not obviously congruent, then the angles, the sides, the signs of the angles can't be, but they are. Because if you take the sine of 35 versus the sine of 35, your calculator is going to give you the same answer. Because it makes the assumption, well, sine, cosine, and tangent only deal with right triangles. And so um, this has to belong to a right triangle. And so if I'm taking the sine of 35 degrees, then all right triangles that have a 35 degree angle are all similar because they're going to be similar by AA. And so therefore, by definition, all of their sides are proportional. And that's how come we can come up with the fact that the sine of 35 degrees of any right triangle is the same because it, it relies on proportional sides. And so that's all that I said here, essentially. All right, so go grab your workbook. We're going to work some problems, and then this might answer your question, Tatum. Okay. Bless you. So we're going to look at 8-3 practice. All right, so let's start with, shh, listen up. Let's start with number two. I want you to write the ratios for sine, cosine, and tangent of angle X. So angle X is your angle of reference. It's uh, 803, so whatever that page is. I don't know. 8-3 practice. 211. 211, thank you. My page number on here is different than your page number. So notice that I circled my um, angle of reference. If I were you, I would be writing, if this is my angle of reference, is, you know, what is side 8? Is it opposite adjacent hypotenuse? What is side 8 red 3? And what is the 16? So I would be putting you know, an A, an O, or an H next to each of these sides so that then you can apply some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid, right? Uh, why are you sitting up there? Sit back in your original seat. No, I never gave you permission to switch. There's a reason why you two aren't sitting next to each other. There you go. Thank you. Zoe would love to talk to you, I'm sure. You don't have to always chit-chat with me, Shaq. I get in trouble just to stop. You can talk to Olivia. She's a lovely young lady. I do talk to Olivia. Okay, good. Perfect. 
Okay, so please write down your um, proportions. I want you to discuss your answers with those around you. I don't hear you discussing. Chit chat. Because you're only doing number two. Correct. The ratio is just asking for the fraction. You're not solving. You're not finding angle X. You're just writing the ratio. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's stop. Let's stop there. I wrote over here to the side the ratios right here. Are my answers correct? Yes. No. No. What? No. Oh, you got to simplify. Yeah, you have to simplify. So these are proper as far as pre-simplification, right? So on the sine of 8 is to 16, I can reduce the 8 and the 16, can't I? 8 goes into 8 once, and 8 goes into 16 two times. So my actual answer is 1 divided by 2. And then same thing happens for the cosine. The 8 and the 16, aren't they both outside of the radical? So anything that's outside of a radical can be reduced with anything that's outside of a radical. So we get 8 goes into 8 once, and 8 goes into 16 twice. So my answer to this one is square root of 3 over 2. And this should start to look familiar, oh, by the way. And then the 8 and the 8 cancel, and you get 1 and 1. What's left in the numerator of the tangent one? No, 1. Yep. If everything cancels out, you're left with a 1, and you get a radical 3 down here. Now, technically, that one's not rationalized, is it? Right there? How do you rationalize that one? Yep, radical 3 over radical 3. And so your true answer is rad 3 over 3. That's your true answer for the tangent of x. So make sure that you have fully simplified, fully rationalized denominators. Um, I could tell you right now what kind of triangle this is and what the angles are for um, X and Y. Why? Look at your side lengths. Don't they all have a greatest common factor? Okay. What is it? Eight. If I divided this, whoops, if I, oops, if I divide this side by eight, what do I get? One. If I decide to divide the adjacent side by 8, what do I get? Uh, 1 red 3, right? Divide this by 8, I get 2. What triangle has a 1, a 2, and a red 3 associated with it? 30, 60. And what angle is always across from 1? 1, red 3, 2. What angle is that? So is an x 30 degrees? Just as a coincidence, it's a special right triangle. So without even using trig, we use our special right triangles. We know that x is 30 degrees. Right? All right, so then I want you to do question 4 and 5. Set up the equation. So I need to see when you're solving these, I need to see what equation you're using. 
I need to see the algebra involved to solve it. I use my calculator as never an excuse. If I cannot see how you solve the equation, you do not get full credit for your answer. Your calculator is a tool. Bless you. So I want you to share with those around you your findings. <coughs> Ladies, talk to Brody so he doesn't get terribly lonely. Yeah. Olivia and Tatum, share with me, Shaq. Yay! Friends! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I believe it's next week, yes. Did you share with Zoe? Zoe, did you guys talk? Okay, so share with Zoe. Homeroom is tomorrow. Yep. Okay, so we ready. What answer, shh, what answer did you get for number four? 7.6. 7.6? 7 for number 4. 10.6, yeah, 7 7 what about number 5? Uh, Alright, so that was good, right? Uh, your work should look identical to mine. If your work does not look identical to mine, you're going to lose points. Because I'm showing the minimal amount of work needed. Just saying. Yes, it is. Alright, then... I want you to do question uh, number nine. I want you to draw a picture, set up an equation to solve, solve it, and write a sentence answer. So your answer must restate the question as a sentence. And so you can do that to the right. So they are telling you the angle at which the ladder makes with the ground. So if you find the ladder and find the ground, those are the two sides of the right triangle that 
that the ladder leaning against the wall creates. So that should tell you where the 77 degree angle is. Find the ladder, find the ground, there's your angle. And then that is your angle of reference. Be really careful. Make sure that you read the question carefully. So when you get an answer, share that with those around you, because there could be two different answers, but only one of them is correct. Yep. So I don't hear a lot of discussion going on. Why? That's no excuse. So let's look at what I have here, and I purposely am hiding part of it. So when you look at your picture, so I drew a picture of the ladder resting against the wall, right? This is the part you're trying to find here where X is. That's the distance that the ladder reaches up that wall. This is where the 77 degrees goes because you can see the ground and the ladder. So the angle that the ladder makes with the ground right here, that's where the 77 degrees goes in. So if you put your 77 degrees in the wrong place, if they had said the angle the ladder makes with the wall, then you would have been up here. We always know that things that are vertical are always perpendicular to the ground, so you should know that your right angle goes there. So that right there was key. The ladder right here is the hypotenuse, so that's the 12 feet. When you set up your equation, x is your side opposite, the ladder is your hypotenuse, so that sine of 77 equals x over 12. So right there, there's your number one issue was where did the 77 degrees go and how do you set up your equation? So once you set up your equation, couple of things occur. When you cross multiply, you get x is equal to 12 times the sine of 77. So you put that in your calculator and you get this as an answer. If this were a multiple choice question, wouldn't that be an answer choice? But I told you to really, you always have to go back and reread your directions. How high does the ladder reach the wall round to the nearest inch? Well, you need to realize that your answer was in feet because the ladder was in feet. So if the ladder was in feet, that means you found x in feet, right? 
and so then we have to convert feet into inches. Again, if you don't know, you want inches, you want the feet to cancel, then you would have one foot in the denominator of your ratio if you're going to use that ratio 12 inches to one foot. And then your 12 inches would be in the numerator. That's how come I knew to multiply by 12. Each one of these feet here has 12 inches in it. You can also look at it that way. So when I multiplied, the closest inch turned out to be 140 inches. And so therefore, this is your answer. Therefore, the ladder reaches about, because it's an approximation, 140 inches up the wall. And so then we're going to do one more. Maybe two more. We'll do two more. So then let's look at question... I want you to do question number 11. I want you to do number 13. So you're going to set up these, these ones. You're finding the angle to the nearest degree. So you're finding the angle. When you don't know the angle, what form of the trig function do you use? Inverse. Inverse. But you still have to set up the equation correctly the first time. So you don't want to say you know, x degrees equals the inverse whatever. That would be the second step. That's not the original equation. I want the original equation to read just like um, we wrote here. So the original equation should look something like this, but instead of 77 degrees, you're going to have x here. And you'll have a full ratio over here. The second step is where you have that inverse trig function. Right? So look at your angle of reference. What is 24 to your angle of reference? Opposite. Opposite. What's the 29? Uh, Hypotenuse. Is that sine, cosine, or tangent? Uh, sine. sine. Your degree is x, so it's sine of x degrees equals... What's opposite? Because we know we're setting up our ratio so that we have opposite over hypotenuse because that's sine. So we've got 24 over 29. So that's the original equation that I want to see. So if I ask for the equation, that's what I'm looking for. Set, up, set it up as a proportion. And when we cross multiply, we end up with 29 times the sine of x. Oh, I didn't want that. We don't need to do that. Do we need a proportion? No. No, sorry, my bad. So to get x by itself, x is going to equal what? The, don't call it sine negative, call it the inverse sine. So the inverse sine of that ratio, 24 over 29. And so x is going to be approximately, because we're going to round it to the nearest degree. So if it's 55, I'm going to write two answers here, 55.85 one dot dot dot. We are rounding to the nearest degree. So look at what's next door because we want to round to that degree. So because there's an 8 next door, Ian's right, x is approximately equal to 56 degrees. You're not, you're not packing up. And then for this one, our angle of reference is here. What is the 17? Opposite. What's the 11? It's leg adjacent, isn't it? What has O and A in it? So we want the tangent of X degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent. So the 17 goes over the 11. We're still not packing up. And then X degrees is equal to the what? Inverse tangent of that ratio, 17 over 11. Because whenever we don't know the degrees to split this up, we use the inverse function. So if I don't know the degrees, x is going to be the inverse tangent, or in this case, the inverse sine. And then, and so you get 50, x is equal to 57 degrees. What was that, Ian? Yes, I want to see this. That's your original equation. And then you can do that one.